smoke for snow, scream for ice, be the tools we use. In Blackfeet, mountains are mistakiks, snow, kuntskoy, and we say cold in Blackfeet, is stoi. Akwit aku, that's a sound of ice cracking. Ku'u is aktsmaknik, that's an occupation site of the people. Niskuts up is an arrowhead. Cultural sites throughout the reservation and Aboriginal territories are further evidence of our history and customs. Well, there's always a little bit of apprehension and anxiety with uh, the start of one of these projects because you just you don't, don't quite know what to expect. Start out with a little bit of rain, some to start out with a little bit of snow, but every time it's been worth trying. Ice patch archaeology refers to archaeological occurrences at permanent snow and ice features. Unlike glaciers, which move, ice patches are stable and can preserve perishable materials for thousands of years. Researchers have found significant archaeological materials at ice patches around the world, including spear points, arrow shafts, leather leggings, and other signs of human presence. Ice patch artifacts found in North America are generally associated with hunting. Ice patches are a good place to avoid insects, and the remains of caribou, bighorn sheep, and bison have been found in these locations. Surveys in Glacier have produced paleobiological samples, but no archaeological sites yet. Ancient plant or animal remains can help reveal what ancient environments were like whereas archaeological materials are produced or modified by humans. The Glacier National Park Ice Patch Archaeology Project, a collaboration of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes of the Flathead Reservation, the Blackfeet Nation, and the National Park Service Climate Change Response Program, is examining ice patch materials in Glacier National Park, Montana. The park contained 150 glaciers in 1910, Today it contains only 26, a reduction of 67%. Ice patches are also disappearing quickly, and exposed items are at risk of loss through decay or theft. Since Glacier National Park is within the Aboriginal territory of the tribes, tribal concerns about resource protection and protocol for appropriately handling artifacts were a source of conflict in the past. This project moves the conversation beyond prescribed consultation to true collaboration between equal partners. The Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes and the Blackfeet Nation have provided invaluable resources. This project is important to the Blackfeet people because the glaciers are a significant part of our tribal ethnicity and history. The development of culturally appropriate protocols to recover and protect endangered objects, burial items, and other culturally sensitive materials were an unprecedented step in the development of a tribally approved process with a clear set of rules. Cultural resources are the Confederate and Salish and Kootenai tribes of the Flathead Reservation most precious resources. Uh, th this is also uh, an interesting project for, for me uh, because it's, it's uh, one of the few times that I've been able to, to work uh, you know, in, in conjunction with uh, indigenous peoples. And that's always an interesting experience for me intellectually because uh, it, invariably people who are, are, are thinking about these, these problems not as necessarily as an archaeologist, bring sort of insights to it that I, I often find myself saying, huh, I, I should have thought of that. The Ice Patch Project partner goals and activities include developing culturally appropriate methods to recover and protect endangered objects and burials, incorporating Native American research into traditional uses of the Alpine areas, include student and tribal views in field work, dissemination of results to tribal and general publics via interactive and documentary materials. And I think it's a good step, not only for this project, but I think archaeology and anthropology in general, 
starting to bring in the people's voice of those that are being studied. And so I think it's really important that the elders are able to have a, a voice in what's said. The Glacier Project began in the spring of 2010. 46 sites were selected and rated according to their match with attributes of archaeologically productive ice patches elsewhere. Attributes include isolation from one another, proximity to lower elevation and ice-free country, and ease of access by humans and animals. Ice patches were photographed, georeferenced, and examined for artifacts and paleobiological materials. The 2010 field work was hampered by unmelted snow from previous years. Snow accumulations were heavier in 2011, forcing the postponement of the field season for one year. The 2010 season yielded 20 samples of ancient wood fragments. No archaeological materials were found. Ten wood samples were radiocarbon dated, yielding dates from 5,300 years to 160 years before present. The samples were primarily from species not currently present in the immediate vicinity of the ice patches. Current hypothesis for the origin of these materials include in situ tree growth during warmer times, construction of raptor or marmot nests, and or transport by people. At present, the in situ growth hypothesis seems the most reasonable. Hopefully, uh, I guess what I'm looking for too is uh, uh, hopefully we're able to maybe uh, get some of our tribal artifacts, maybe uh, discover something there um, that we're able to, uh, able to say that is Blackfeet. Here we are on a project and we're actually including the tribes from the area, which I think is a big step and I don't want it to, I'd like to dispel the myth that the tribes are uh, roadblock, but we're actually uh, contributing and, and capable, competent. The issue of global warming has a direct effect on cultural resources. Glacier's alpine regions were important to the Salish, Ponderé, Kootenai, and Blackfeet peoples. And to see how human use of that, of th of that environment has changed as a function of climate change over, over time. And the, 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 the reason the organic artifacts are so interesting uh, partly because there's something that we rarely find as archaeologists. Ice fields have sort of kept everything refrigerated for, for us. So it, it offers us an opportunity to, to see a piece of the technology that we don't usually get to see. Uh, but, but in addition, the organic technology we know is definite evidence that humans were up there and we can date it with radiocarbon dating. The project refined identification of target ice patches by incorporating high-resolution aerial photography from the U.S. Geological Survey. Project partners are actively tackling the threat of permanent loss of cultural and natural heritage caused by climatic change. This project will continue for two more years, setting a high standard for collaborative research opportunities for tribes, parks, and researchers through the protocols and relationships established by this team endeavor. Languages, songs, dances, prayers, ceremonies, hunting, high tannin, beading, fishing, plant gathering, food and medicine preparations, feasts or storytelling are or still being done today. We have songs, origin stories, sacred teepees, as well as plants, birds, and animals in our bundles that come from the Rocky Mountains. Climate change has affected our landscape, so we are happy to contribute to this project that addresses common scientific and tribal concerns for our valuable and irreplaceable resources. Protection of these irreplaceable resources is essential for sustaining the cultures